Congratulations. Graduation. You look bigger. You look like a bigger boy now. It's a one, two. Good morning. It's a one. Now you got all three of them. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to Open Gate Church. My name is Mike. Come on inside if you're outside. Get ready to start. If you're here visiting, we're glad to see you. Glad to see Perry. Hello, Perry. All right. Yeah, baby. God's doing a mighty work in our church, and I'm glad to see you guys here this morning. There's a lot of things going on, of course, you know, with the with the homeless and ministering and, and going over to the palms and ministering to the elderly. God's doing a mighty work. As we study the Word of God, we always go verse by verse, chapter by chapter. That way we don't get off track with the Word. I'm going to ask my brother Lyle to come up this morning and... Glad to see him back. He's going to share a word of prayer. I'm so happy to pray a prayer mostly, okay, entirely of thanks, a prayer of thanks uh, for each one of you to be here and for me to be here, uh, for us to be here uh, in God's house. Let's, Let's pray. Father, you are so good to us, and we just thank you that we are your children, that we know that you love us, that you are watching over us, that you twist things, you tweak things, you change the timing of things so that we can enjoy successes uh, in, in this life, Father, that we see your hand in so many things uh, that you show uh, us and reveal to us that you are God, and you're our God. And so we thank you for that, that you don't hide uh, yourself from us, that you reveal yourself to us in so many ways. Uh, And Father, we just pray, I pray this morning, Father, for each one that's here, just pray that that they would be... um, so encouraged by your Holy Spirit in this place that they would would go away from here knowing that 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 we are a family that we are together and that we enjoy worshiping you together as a family and take that joy out into the community father and out into the world and Hopefully, everyone that we come in contact with, Father, will know that we are yours and you are ours. And so, Father, we just again we say thank you. Ask for your Holy Spirit to descend on this place and influence everything that we do and say. And pray in your Son's name. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's all stand together. All right. Glad to see everybody out today. Welcome again to Open Gate Church. We are here to worship God. Well, you could be a million miles away. You could be within a step from him. 
That doesn't matter. Distance and space does not matter. All you need to do is worship him according to the scriptures we've been learning. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Instantly, heaven meets earth. The divine inhabits humanity. That's what we got to look forward to this morning. Some amazing stuff will happen as we draw near to the Lord. So let's sing, let's praise the Lord. Let's um, let's sing about we, us having a new name. Really good rhythm. Tell them. A new 
the Lord this morning. Yeah, it's so good to, when we can come together. I was telling Sister Yvonne, what an honor and a, and a privilege. We come into the house of the Lord. Every burden, every worry, every fear is lifted just at the, in the presence of God. You walk into it, it just takes over. Every burden, every fear, every worry, every anxiety is lifted. And we're able to experience God's goodness. Let's sing this next song together.
presence, Lord. Will you, Lord? What's up? Receive. He's here to give. We can be confident that He is able to give all the things that we need because He gave the very best from heaven for you and I. He didn't withhold anything. He didn't send a good man. He didn't send an angel. He sent the very best in heaven. He said, There is my son. I'm going to send him to bring mankind back to me. And so, if He's willing to give the greatest, and that means he's able to give you the shalom that you need, the peace. He's able to give you the joy that you need. He's able to give you the grace that you need. He's able to provide everything that we need, whatever it is right now that we need, whatever it is tomorrow you're going to need. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and he will provide it all. And he's proven it time and time again so we can trust, we can rest our faith in him that he will do it. That's how great our God is. That's how magnificent our God is. That is how caring our God is and compassionate our God is. Thank you, Lord.
Come on, church. for your, the establishment of your kingdom here in this place as we cried out, as many people have cried out throughout the ages because of your instruction your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven let it continue to do so Lord throughout our morning, throughout our lives throughout our interactions Lord have your way, reign as king because you are great and greatly to be praised in your precious name and all God's people said Amen. Amen. Let's get out of our seats for a few moments and just greet each other in the Lord's love this morning.
Testing one, two, there we go. That's a little weird. Sounds like that sounds a little weird. Real tinny, huh? Oh, that's why. Testing one, two. How's that sound? A little bit better, huh? Testing one, two. Da 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 da. Okay. Hey, Alicia, come on up here. No, no, we'll do a greeting. Testing one, two. We just want to say how much we love you guys and how much we appreciate all that you guys are doing. Um, um, one of the concerns, we have a heart for our congregation, and um, we're living in tough times, aren't we? You know, I think of financially, we, we're hit, we're, we feel it, you know, um, the, the drain on our economy and the, the struggles that we're going through, it's, um, it's, it has an effect on us. But I just want to say, may God continue to bless our church as, and prosper us in spite of what's going on around us. God is going to give us wisdom. God is going to give us direction. God is going to give us insight. God is going to give us instruction. He always does. He always figures out a way on how to uh, keep his people afloat, keep his people not participating in what's going around us, right? We live in a world, what is it? It's dark. So are we dark? We're light. And what does the scripture say that we learned in the book of John in the beginning? The darkness does not overcome the light. The light overcomes the darkness. So you know what that means? As we're salt and light, that we are impacting around us. We're not participating in the things that are going on in this world as far as um, uh, being in despair, not, not figuring out what, what to do with our, you know, the different things that we need in our, in our lives, in our families. God is going to give us wisdom. And I just want to tell you that in the coming months, we're going to be having some financial seminars on how God wants to maybe elevate some of us some more. Not to say that we haven't, you know, we're, we're downtrodden, but God has met our needs. But let's say, can I just say this? There's always more. Do you want just enough? <laughs> God is the God of more than enough. He overflows our cup. And so, but here's the thing. God likes to use something that's, that he's gifted all of us with. You know what that is? Our minds. Now, he doesn't want to equip us in a way that you're going to forget God. He wants to equip you in a way that helps us understand. Just rely on him. Trust in him. Spend time with him. And he's going to give us wisdom. And his, he's the source of that wisdom. He wants us to use our mind. So we're going to learn. How many can say amen to that? Yeah. Now, you know, in my, in my family, we've struggled um, throughout the years, throughout the generations of being poor, struggling, working really hard. And, you know, and, um, you know we, did, we learned last week this is in spite of what the, the, the royalty and the leadership and the elite uh, during that time that Jesus was around um, was God is always working. Can we remember that? Remember we talked about that? And then it says, if, and Jesus was saying, if God my Father is always working, and what he says about himself, he is always working. Well, just so you know, back in the day, for the elite, for the royalty, for the people that were in charge, they did not like a lot of work. Work was foreign. It's like, no, we let the peasants do all the work. And God was, and Jesus was giving insight that, hey, God is a God of work. He's a God of labor. He does enjoy that. But what he wants to do is, I believe he wants to teach us some principles and some things on how we can excel. And he wants us to get out of cycles of poverty, cycles of, of thinking and, and, and I just, you know, even my life, I'm, I'm just, I look forward to how God is going to change that and break those things in my life. Because modeling is extremely important when my kids, my grandkids see me learning and, and, and then show, uh, and asking me questions about what do you do with your, fi your finances, Papa? What, what do you do with your, in your bank account? Uh, why are you giving to the church? Um, why are you give this, um, Papa? Why are you, um, you know, 
reaching out. Why are you doing? Well, because these are the principles. These are the things that God has shown us how to do. And we will prosper when we connect, when we're connect. So I just want to say, praise the Lord, Open Gate Church. You have got, you have, you are capturing, you are absorbing the blessings of God. You are uh, absorbing the character of God, the benevolence of God, and you guys have been giving. You guys know that? You guys have been giving, and we can't exist without that kind of heart inside of the people of God. And, um, you know, the cool thing is we, when we're faithful to God, God is faithful to us. And um, come here, Alicia. <laughs> like, what am I going to tell you? Well, we just want to say, you know, uh, we just signed. Um, we've been here at this church for two years. And um, I tell people, you know, what we're paying here at this church. Um, they're saying, wow. What do you, you guys get used of all this? And um, we just signed another year lease to be here. And we're paying like 1980s, 1990s rent for this facility. And so it's only by the grace of God. We, we pay $1,200 a month here. And we get to use this and other things and other parts of the building. And it's the blessings of God. God has been faithful to us. We've been a little church. And, um, we, you know, when we started the first year, you know what we paid? $1,000 a month. That's less than what, that's less than, than a house. You know, what, what are people paying for a house? Huh? I, I was just talking. In, in our neighborhood, um, they raised the rent, and then um, one of the, size, the same size as our house, it was they were paying $2,000 a month. <laughs> we're paying 1200 bucks here. It's bigger than our house. You know, the square footage. What a blessing. See, God is looking out for us. Amen. And he's going to continue to figure out ways on how no, we're just, just going to make it. No, to prosper us and to bless us. And it's just been beautiful to see how God even is helping us here to be a blessing to others around us, right? Isn't that awesome? So be confident, brothers and sisters, that God is has our best interest at heart so let's be open to how he's going to change us. I just wanted my wife to, um, to be up here with me, and, um, and we just want to say how we're so grateful for you guys and um, how we're so grateful for our church and this community and how you guys have come around us. And um, it's just awesome. It really is a blessing. You, yeah, last week. Was it last week? Yeah, last week. We had kids. You guys gave, it was my birthday, and you guys gave me money. And so the kids were coming up and giving me money. I was like, oh, what in the world? And it's like, I'm so, just so humbling, the, the blessings of God. And, and uh, like, we're just so grateful to be here. You want to say anything in, in, on that? I just, uh, I'm just real blessed. I'm overwhelmed. Um, worship was beautiful. It was beautiful just to be in the house of the Lord and just to receive from him. Um, I've been, had a blessed week. I've been going to work and being blessed and having a blessed week. But, you know, there's some of us that are struggling. There's some of us that are hurting. There's some of us that are um, are up or down or struggling, you know, just whatever it could be. But I just want to encourage you this morning that God is here this morning. He's here to love on you. He's here to give you peace. He's here to give you joy. He's here to heal you, whatever it may be. Um, I've been struggling with my shoulder. I don't know what's wrong with it, but... I just can't lift it or something, but I believe a healing. God's going to heal me, you know, and there's many of us that are sick. They're sick. My mom's sick, so lift her up in prayer. Um, so my sister, Priscilla, so just kind of lift these people up in prayer and keep them. Um, I love the chat group that um, Miss April has put together. I mean, we're all on there. I hope you guys are all on there. We pray for each other. We just cover each other with love and encouragement and just even if it's just the hands of prayer, because I know we're busy throughout our day, but, you know, it shows that person we love them, we care for them, because that's what we're about. We love you for who you are. Just come. Just come and just receive from the Lord. God bless you. Right on. Awesome. So, yeah, if you guys aren't on that uh, prayer uh, text, um, you, uh, talk to April. If you can be on it. She'll put your name on that, and then you can see all the prayer requests that are going up, all the different things that come up during the week. We're like, oh, could you pray for me, you know, this happened, you know, we're in a fender bender, pray for it. Okay, well, then you, you'll start seeing all kinds of people praying for you. It's pretty awesome. So, um, yeah, this is April. Raise your hand, April. 
if you need to put your if you want to put your phone number on that, that'd be awesome. Okay, we have some announcements. Come on up here, Jim. Tell us what um, what in the world is happening here in our church. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Praise the Lord. You know, it's exciting to be involved with God's ministry. I'll tell you what. Uh, I was talking to a good family friends of ours this morning, how we uh, grew up together with a guy. We called him MC Tiny, and he just recently passed away. Real good, real good guy. And uh, Anthony remembers me when I first came to our old church. And you're talking about a boy from Iowa, a farm boy, white boy, lived around white people. Okay, get the message? Okay, so, and uh, I got saved in a Southern Baptist church, was there for many years and served, and then uh, God decided to throw a wrench in the works and said, yeah, guess where you're going, and you're going to go to a totally Hispanic ministry, <laughs> and uh, so next thing I know, I find myself in a Holy Ghost gospel, <laughs> praise the Lord, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, something I was not used to. And uh, I appreciate it very much what God has done. I've been with uh, the Hispanic ministry for many years, probably over half my life. And um, they're very expressive people. They really give their hearts more so than my past experiences. And I want to also thank you also because it's wonderful to be in the presence of people that really have a genuine heart and a love and a compassion for what God wants, more so than what we want. And I appreciate that personally. So let's go ahead. By saying that, there we go. We get the blessings of, and the honor of being able to go to celebrate recovery at 5.30, they get together and they have dinner and they ha they, we just have fellowship and, and visit. After we do this, then we also have a worship session. And Pastor Anthony, in many cases, comes and joins us to be a part of that. At that time, they separate. They could have a lesson or they can have a testimony. And uh, you've heard many uh, testimonies given this, uh, these past Sundays as far as Maria and, and others in April. Uh, sharing some of the awesome move of God in people's lives. And then uh, 7 to 8 o'clock, they have group where the men and the women separate and go to different locations. That way they have the freedom to be open about some of the things that they're facing. All right, the next one, we have the fireworks booth uh, sales that's going to be coming up uh, July 4th. We're still looking for people if you're interested in, uh, we have a sign-up sheet out on the hallway. And if you're interested in helping us out, which we could use some help, um, it's going to be starting July 1st at noon. That's when we open up. And uh, it goes until July 4th. And, and many times we finish up around noon-ish, around in there. So if you're interested, you, can only ha you only have to do maybe one or two hours. That's all we're asking and just to help out a little bit. So get with uh, April or myself in the back and uh, the sign-up sheet's right there. Okay, and then we also have the, the Palms. Uh, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. we have the, the honor of being able to, with the uh, folks there. And uh, what amazing ministry once again. I can't express enough. If you get the opportunity to go, please go. It, it'll minister to you in ways and you'll live that place just completely and totally different in your attitude, the way you see things. They really minister big time to us. And the, the book of John is amazing, the way Pastor uh, Anthony preaches it. I mean, he brings things out that I've never heard in my whole 40 years of being a Christian. So it's absolutely incredible some of the things that are coming out of that. Right, Esther? And you? Huh? Amen? Okay. And then, of course, we have the river. Awesome testimony as well to be able to go to uh, the river, to be able to meet the folks. Um, it's amazing how loving and compassionate they become towards us. It was a lot of work at the beginning, the first year or so, to get their trust. But now that their trust is there, 
man, I'll tell you what, some of the things they share with us, the way they open up, the way they give back as far as their their life, they share. I mean, they're, they're bold anymore. So the things that pastor goes out there and the, just to hear him minister to them and, and uplift them and give them encouragement, it's really, uh, it really fe- feeds you as an individual, as a Christian, and it's really awesome. And I believe that's pretty much it. Um, oh, we also have a pizza that's donated by a gentleman that we, he, he's at the gaming uh, program that we did at one time. But he, uh, any, any pizzas that they get an order, they don't come and pick it up or it's a mistake, he, he goes ahead and donates it to us. We can bring it to the, to the, the river. Also, uh, Miss Alice has something that she needs to also bring to the attention of all of us. I talked too much and I forgot to, tell, <laughs> to say it at the end. That's why I looked at Jim. Jim, I forgot. Um, Miss Maria Mangasser, she had put this wonderful calendar for the children's ministry, and um, which is really nice because um, we see the children's ministry teaching them once a month. So it's really nice to have sign-ups and people be involved in that because our children are very important. we got to minister to them and make sure they get that word in their hearts So because they're the next generation. They're going to carry us the next step you take a, a step higher so anyway i have this calendar that well actually maria mcgaster made it for me and um i we had she filled up may and june with people sign up so i need uh july and august filled so if god is t- t- touching your hearts um tugging at you i get the curriculum together i have it ready for you you just step right in and we just need somebody just to teach it to them and um, so if you guys are interested, let me know so I can put your name on there and let me get your number. Because if you can't make it, let me know. We'll fill in. No problem. So just um, if God is touching your heart in any way, just let me know. and um, Or you'll see me um, kind of go after you. Hey, hey, hey. Yes. Yeah, come on. You have something oh, okay. to say, too? Come on up, April. I thought she was telling me something sign language. Here comes Ms. April. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, what was forgotten was this Saturday we are um, doing the home, feeding the homeless spaghetti. So if you all want to um, meet up that night, that day, the youth can come also, and um, we can go out and minister to the homeless and send them, you know, get them some spaghetti dinners and that. And then um, the 24th is the youth. They're going to get together here, and then they're going to go over, and they're going to go play golf and have fellowship and um, do a Bible study there. So we wanted to put that out there. Wonderful. Thank you guys for taking care of all that stuff. That's a lot of um, activities there. And we never are going to forget our children because that's where I started. That's where many people, the majority of people who become Christians made a decision, were exposed when they were children. And so it gives back dividends. So we have to really minister. We have to do it purposely. We have to be active in that, not passive, but active in ministering and going after our kids. So pray with me as we break into God's word this morning. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your word. It is amazing. It is powerful. It is effective. And, Lord, I pray that you help me as a minister of your word to get out of the way so your word can come forth and it could do its work. It could transform. It could change. It could build up. And, Lord, we thank you for your word that is, it is clear, it is active, and, Lord, we pray that our hearts will be made ready through your Holy Spirit. We need you to help us to understand your word. And we say these things in your precious name. And everyone said... Amen. Well, why don't you hit that little introduction video? It should say John. Um. Building up. Huh?
can turn it back on now. <laughs> it's just a little introduction. That's it. <laughs> it's just an introduction of what we've been studying. But it hasn't been, you know, I really enjoy um, our style, this style of, of, of going through God's Word. A lot of people, there's a thing called systematic theology. Systematic theology is where you believe in, like, the doctrine of uh, faith, okay? And you have a topic, faith, and then you get all the scriptures that talk about faith. And basically all those scriptures bolster why we should have faith, the kind of faith you have, all that stuff. It's like topical. But what we, the, what we try to do is we try to communicate the scriptures in the sense of like the early church would have been exposed to the, to the word of God. So when they wrote the word of God, like, for instance, the book of John, John wrote it. He wrote it, and then the churches would read it throughout the whole region. And they didn't have the full Bible put together. That didn't come later. That's called the canon. They, they assembled the, the books together. So what they would do is they would read John's reading. They would uh, writing. They would read Galatians, and they would read it together, and they would try to they would understand it. They would talk about it, and they and they didn't have a lot of cross references where they go, oh, that you know, they would let the author, as they've been inspired by the Holy Spirit, carried on, inspired by God to speak God's word, write it down, and then they would read it, and then you would be able to get why God inspired them from the author. To write these words. It's really interesting. I really love it. In the same sense, it's the way I read uh, and the way many of us read um, books today. Um, I have some old author um, that, I mean, old favorites that I like. They're authors from 1800s, 1700s. It's really hard to read. But I read them, and I'm not cross-referencing them all the time, like going to another book to find out what they're really saying. I, try, I read, and many of us do this, right? When you read a book, do you read all their other books to try to understand that book? No, you read that book. You know, you read that book and say, well, okay, what are they trying to say in this instance? It's In a way, it's sort of, sort of like you get to know the character and the, the person that's writing the book. And it's almost like, wow, I can, I can, I see what they're trying to get at. You know, it's, I, I love it because when I think about some of my favorite authors that are old, they're dead and gone. They've been gone, dead for generations but they're still ministering to me. It's almost like, it's almost like they, in their heart, they said, you know what, Lord, you've been so good to me and I want to share this. And maybe some of them knew, some of them didn't know, but can I have an impact, Lord, on generations to come to those who want it? And they are having an impact on my life. These, these people that are no longer here. And, they're, they, so I like to read. I love to read these old guy, these older um, authors, and it, it feels like I get. And, and what's cool is I get to hear and, and see how God has inspired these men and women. And um, yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I've uh, I have some. There's a there's a series that is connected to the group um, that we belong to, and it's a missionary um, stories. And one of the stories that really stands out, that really captures my heart, is how God speaks today, how God is able to communicate and bring unity. We're going to talk a little bit about that, how God, um, he emphasizes unity and harmony. And one of, the, one of the stories that stands out was these missionaries were in some uh, Pacific, South Pacific islands. They were uh, ministering to some tribal groups that were on some uh, islands that were nobody could go, nobody, they, they were very closed, and many of them were um, uh, cannibals, and so many missionaries didn't want to go there. They didn't want to get eaten. And so, but God puts it on the, put it on the heart of these people. This is right before World War II was, uh, was happening, and these people went. They had been going there. They had been going to these islands, and it took, uh, they would hike to these places, and God was doing a work. Well, World War II happened, and um, it was starting, and the Japanese were going down from Japan. They were moving down to, down the island, conquering islands. 
They were getting, and, and so these people, these missionaries, they were like, oh, my goodness. Our island is we're probably like the, the fourth or fifth island in, in, in line to get taken over by the Japanese. And so they were coming. And so um, the Americans and many of the, the Western uh, governments, they said, you, okay, look, it, you guys are there. They got a message to them. You guys need to leave. You guys need to leave now because it's coming your way and um, you're not going to be able to um, be there. We already seen what they're doing at all the other islands and you guys are going to be imprisoned. And the missionaries, people who, are, who had um, invested decades to um, change the, um, translate the Bible, and um, the families, and some of them, had, you know, one guy, one of the leaders, he had um, diabetes. <clears throat> and anyway, so the leader of the group said, okay, look it. We're here because God spoke to us. We're not here because man spoke to us. We're here because God spoke to us. Does God still speak now? And they're like, yeah, yeah, okay. So, right. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is what our organization is telling us to do. It seems like this is the wisest thing to do, but let's go to the one who is the wisest of all. Let's ask, and I'm not going to tell you. I don't want any of our team to talk to each other, even why, husbands and wives. We need to hear from God. This is, this is crazy. This is, this, is, this is amazing. This is a matter of life and death, what we're talking about here, because they were hearing all the atrocities that were happening as the Japanese were coming, and so they pray. He said, we're going, to, we're going to do a whole overnight. We're going to pray overnight. We're just going to have an all-night prayer meeting, and I just want you guys to steal away, and let's hear what God says. So they did that. The morning came. They all came together. And he said, okay, what did God tell you? He started going around the circle. What did God tell you? Well, he told me, I think we should stay and not go. Because there was a there was a um, a freighter a freight um, boat that was going to be over there to take a, a lot of the other people away from there. They were going to leave there, so they were going to get ready. So they, they said, "He's going around the circle. I'm not going to get on that boat. I, th I think I, I I know God wants us to stay." Then the next one, next one, they all in unity. They said, "God wants us to stay on the island." And as the Japanese come. We're just going to have to go through that, whatever it might be. It's a true story. This is, this is it's beautiful, um, um, this series of missionary stories. And anyway, so he said, well, okay, then the decision is made. We're going to stay. All the people were getting off the boat. There was other organizations that were there, other Westerners that were there, other people that were just there, you know, as, as in business. And other things, and so they were all getting on this boat. They were, and the people that were missionaries, they were looking at them. This island, you know, you could see the port, and they were seeing all the people get on that boat, and they're like, "Oh Lord, Lord, I, we, you know, I'm, I'm sure there was turmoil inside of them. There was testing, there was temptation to say, you know what, maybe I should go, maybe I should get on that boat, but they all, they all were faithful to God's word." And they said, okay, God wants us to not go, which means it's almost illogical. You guys need to leave. You know, here comes these, you know, here comes war is coming to your island, and it's, they're going to imprison you, and, or they might kill us all, whatever. But they knew one thing, don't get on that boat. So the turmoil, they're there, everybody leaves, and then... Um, they take off on that boat, and then sure enough, here they come, boom. Island, they conquer that island, boom. The next week, they conquer the next island, boom. They come to their island, and guess what they did? They imprisoned them. They, some of them got tortured. Some of them got taken to a, uh, an island, many of them. They were separated, men and women. And um, they were put on an island, and they, they starved. They were, so many of them died. Many of the team died, and, um, you know, um, they were, they were abused harshly. Um, it wasn't until after they, after World War II, and they were set free. Probably half of them survived from the team, just because they, you know, were able to scrounge together and work together. 
Um, there were some miraculous things that happened during that whole time, but they were definitely, they were definitely went through the trial and tribulation of being imprisoned. Well, and this was in the beginning of the war, so that, so that means they were in prison for about four, four and a half years. They were struggling. So that they were finally set free. Half of them were alive. Many of them passed away. And um, half of them passed away. And so it wasn't until after they came home, they found out later that that boat that they would have got on was shot down by a... Um, was uh, by a torpedo, and they all died on that boat. Yeah, just, you know, so what does that go to show us? God still speaks. We've, I've, I've employed the same uh, strategy whenever we've had um, group meetings. Some, you know, I was part of a, a church where we did missionary work around the world, and people would come to us and ask for money. And um, I would say, okay, well, you know what? I think the consensus is we need to give money to this person. This person, where they're going is important. The people, what they're doing is important. So we're going to give some money. So now, but here's the thing. I don't know exactly what we need to give to this person because we had, we had some money to give, uh, some support. And so... And I did that same technique, that same strategy. I said, God still speaks now. Let's go. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord and he, to show us what, what we're going to give. And by the end of the evening, everybody had the same number, the same dollar amount. <laughs> and these are people that, you know, some people are, you know, in a gathering like this, there's some of us that are real sensitive to God, right? Real sensitive to the Holy Spirit, real sensitive to, you know, spiritual matters. And there's other, others of us that are like a bump on a log. <laughs> and like, I don't know what God wants. I never heard God speak in my life or whatever, you know. It's okay. We're all learning how to hear God, right? And so we had people like that in the team, and they came up with the same number too as well. We would write it down. And I just, I was like, wow, Lord, you still speak today. You know what this speaks of? It's, it speaks of God's unity, God's consistency. And we talked, you know, last week we talked about God never stops working. He never stops working. He never stops speaking. And so the unity that is established in the portion of Scripture that we're going to go through, it is continuous and it is active. All right, let's go. Let's go to um, John chapter 5. And last week we talked about the, the man who was paralyzed, who was invalid, and he was at a pool that was traditionally known, John chapter 5, it was traditionally known as a place where people can get healed if an angel stirred up the water and, and the first one in the water, they were healed, right? And Jesus goes on, up to him, do you want to get healed? Do you want to get, do you want to get well? Sir, I'm paralyzed. I can't move. When I want to get in the pool, nobody will help me get in the pool. So, and then Jesus said to him, all right, well, get up. Pick up your mat and walk, which was controversial because it was a Sabbath. You're not supposed to work. You're not supposed to carry your mat. That was what the, all the leadership um, and enforced. Don't pick up your mat. It was specific. You shouldn't carry up your bedroll at all. And work. And Jesus told him the exact opposite. And what do we get from that? That God sometimes does things in an unorthodox manner. He will oftentimes bash and break down the tradition of men. When we get a hold of something, something that's beneficial for the whole group, sometimes we can go too far and we become legalistic about it. And when you come in legalistic about it, you crush the soul of men. You crush um, the, the main purpose of what God wants. And so Jesus, was he wanted to get rid of all that. And so he tells this man to get up and walk. He was cured. He was As he picked up his mat and walked, he was cured, but he didn't know who the man was. He didn't know who Jesus was because he slipped away. He didn't make a big deal about it. He didn't say, it was me, I healed you. Let everybody know who did it, right? Isn't that cool? What do we get from that? This is a style of Jesus. Jesus is not a bragger. Jesus is not a boaster. Jesus is not somebody who's on um, 
TikTok and say, hey, look at what I did. You know, like, <laughs> he's, not, he's not one of those guys. He is going to do an awesome thing, and it's going to have an impact. So he doesn't have to do all that stuff. He doesn't have to toot his horn. He doesn't have to say how great I am. He just does what he does, and it is amazing. Same thing with us. We could, we could follow in the same footsteps that he is um, laying out. Um, he's modeling for us how we are to minister. All right. So um, later on, he's, Jesus finds him in the temple, and he says, See, you are well again, so, telling the invalid man. And then he, then he gives him a little bit more uh, instruction. He told him his first instruction was, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And then the second instruction was, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So he's given him more instruction. There, in, in, in other words, with us, we can be healed, but there's always more. We can be healed. We can be walking. We can be like, wow, he changed, transformed my life. There's always more. And one of the things that there's always more is sanctification. God is teaching us how to walk in sanctification. Layer by layer, he takes away all the ugliness that's in us. Layer by layer, day by day, he takes away the things that we struggle with or attitudes that are wrong or reactions that shouldn't be there, things that are in our past that determine how we behave. He's going to take a lot of those things away step by step. He's going to walk us through sanctification and and then the last thing is that we saw was he told the leaders, because the leaders were concerned, the leaders were, were angry because Jesus was disrupting the law and the tradition and the cycle of what they had, this power they had on, on um, all the Jewish people. And he was going to bash that. He was going to take it away. And so they were like, who, who told you to do this? Who, who did the, they, were, they weren't concerned about the healing. They were more concerned about, you know, him, him um, messing up their rules. He didn't know who did. And then finally, after he, Jesus interacted with them, he realized it was Jesus. And then he goes back and tells them, the man that healed me, the man that told me to lift up, pick up my mat, its name is Jesus. He sort of told on them. What does that tell us? It says, yeah, we're, 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 we've been transformed. We've been changed. God is helping us walk in, in sanctification, but there's still, there's still more. There's still problems we have in our life. This man still, he told on Jesus. <laughs> he told on Jesus. So after, sometimes, you, you know, we, we, we look at our, our life, when we look at us coming into Christ, um, we, we, we're walking with the Lord, and we're like, wow, he took away this from me. He took away this from me. He took away this from me. And then... You do something that's out of your character. You're like, wow, I didn't think I would do that. Well, yeah, there's still remnants. There's still things that need to, be, need to come out you didn't even realize. And that's, that was just in this man's life. He was healed. He was walking. He knew who it was, the style of Jesus. He, he was a humble in a humble way. But you know what? He still could not disconnect himself from the tradition of man and the legalism of man. And so he told on Jesus. And Jesus was like, you know, okay, don't worry. I, I, I knew that was going to happen. And it's actually on purpose that he did all this because this is what starts the next chapter. This whole chapter is what starts the persecution of Jesus. The persecution, the ministry he's going to be doing is all going to be persecution that he's going to have to fight against. And so this is all going to lead to the culmination of him being killed by these leaders. So now we're going to go through. Verse 16, and this is what we went, we went through. Uh, we ended at verse 18 uh, last week, but I just want to read that together. So go to, yeah, verse 16. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, doing what things? What was he doing? Healing. He was doing the healing on, on, on the Sabbath, and he was telling people, you know, hey, now you were never able to carry your bedroll. Now you can, now you can carry your bedroll. Do it. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. Next verse. In his defense, Jesus said to him, so that said to them, so now he's talking back to them after they're persecuting him, they're coming against him. He says, my father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. So he talks about God, his father, he mentions that, and what he's doing. 
And he says, because my father is always working, I too am working. Verse 18. The next verse. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. So they wanted to kill him. They wanted to persecute him. But they, Jesus, in this interaction, he made him, they, he made him even more mad. He angered them even more. You ever get in an argument with a kid? <laughs> and then they, and they can't admit they're wrong, and then they, even get even, they throw even more stuff on the fire, and now not only were they in trouble for one day, now you're going to be grounded for a week. You know what? You want to argue with me more? All right, two weeks. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm going to strangle you, kid. <laughs> this is what's going on with these, with these leaders, these Jewish leaders. Jesus is getting persecuted by these men, and he's coming back against them, and they want to kill him even more. They want to kill Jesus even more. And why? Why? It says, for this reason they tried all the more to kill him. What reason? Not only was he breaking the Sabbath. How dare you, Jesus, break the Sabbath, the rule that we put in place? Who made the Sabbath? Huh? God. Right? God, on the seventh day he cre after creation, on the seventh day, he, he rested. Now, let me ask you, according to Jesus and according to what he just said, did he really rest? Did he go to sleep? Did he take a nap? What, did he, what, is, what does God, what do you say about his God? He said he's always working. That's right. And remember, during this era, during this time, Religious leaders, work was bad. Work was what servants did. Work was what those who beneath us do. And God and Jesus say, my father is always at work. And I, too, am working. So, he's the creator of the Sabbath. He's in control of the Sabbath. That, tell, that, tell, that tells me something about myself. That I have to be careful when God has put something in place, put something in my life, put some things in my life to help give us guidance, that I could take it overboard. I could put it, I can go too far. I can. I can put it on people, and then now, all of a sudden, you know, there are groups that, like, you have to, you cannot wear a tie at church. There are groups like that, you know. We're not, nobody can wear a tie. If you wear a tie... You're the devil. Yeah. I know a brother. That, yeah, he, he went to a church, and they could not wear a tie. There's another one, another, another church, where um, the small little groups, you know, they, you got to wear suspenders. <laughs> so, yeah, all the guys had to wear suspenders. It's like, what in the world? If you want to be part of our group, you got to wear suspenders. We all can be like that where we take what God has put upon us and we want to force it on others and really make people feel bad and all, all this. Stuff. Remember, God is always at work. And Jesus says, I too am working. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is also speaking. He is the living word, and he will speak to us. He can speak to us. He can talk to us. And he will help people understand what he's requiring of people. So don't play Holy Spirit. You hear me? Don't put the things that God has already helped you get rid of. Don't try to put that on other people. We're like, you know what? God did this for me. And you know what? You're, do you're, you're, you're still doing what I used to do. And God doesn't want you to do that. Stop it or you're going to hell. <laughs> you know, you, you, God doesn't love you. God, God's going to, you know what? Bad things are going to come your way. This is what we do. This is what I do. Don't play Holy Spirit. Have confidence that Jesus, have confidence that God is always working. And if anybody is going to change, it's because he is doing the changing. It's sad to say. But in a lot of churches, they come, 
they start dressing like they're dressing okay, they start talking all right, they start acting okay, but deep down in their minds and their hearts, they're still doing the same old stuff. And so for a time, for a period, they've, they're ch they changed. But then we see what's really going on. I've seen pastors fall, you know, get caught up in all kinds of stuff. And so it doesn't matter how high you are in ministry or in church or whatever. You can be caught up. Just like these guys were all caught up in this, getting this rule, being legalistic about it, and crushing the life out of people, not letting God, not allowing him to do the changing and the transforming. Don't play Holy Spirit. You are not the Holy Spirit. God is the one that does the transforming. When he changes us from the inside out, my goodness. My goodness, nobody can ever take away the scriptures that God spoke to me directly and shook me to my, shook me to my soul and said, Anthony, you better, you better fix this. And God told, God's talking to me like, oh, my gosh. Okay. And, man, it was amazing. The first, I, the first taste I got of this was when I, was a, when I first became a Christian. Sunday, gave my life to the Lord, 13 years old. Monday, Tuesday, I was staying with my grandma and grandpa. They were smokers, and I stole my grandma and grandpa's cigarettes. Pal mouths, filterless. <laughs> you know, so there I am, going in the field, smoking those cigarettes. And all of a sudden, nobody was around, and I thought, what am I doing? Why did you steal from your parents, grandparents, and why are you... Why are you hiding over here? Because it's wrong, son. And so I was like, I had never felt that before. I thought, you know, I'm happy. I, just, I got away with something, you know. But this time was different. I gave my life. I was awake and I was a new creature. I was born again. And I was doing something, the same old thing that I usually, usually did. And God spoke to me. And like, okay, I'm not going to do that no more. Apologize to my grandparents. Look what I did. What? Who is this kid? God changes us from the inside out. You know, he just changes us from the inside out. And so this is what he's trying to get us to understand. Okay, next verse. Oh, hold on, let's, let's, stay, let's stay at that verse there. Go back, sorry. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, that that's what they were angry about, but he was even calling God... Say those three, le three words. He was calling God his own father because he said, my father is always working. So they wanted to kill him because he was breaking the Sabbath, and they wanted to kill him because he was calling God his own father. And what does that equate to? Read that, those, the last portion of that sentence. Making himself equal with God. If he's the son of God, that means he has the nature of the father. That means making himself equal with God. Now, why do they want to kill him? Those two reasons. Because he broke the Sabbath and he made himself equal with God, with the statement that he made. Next verse. Verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. Next verse. Verse 20. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. Next verse. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Next verse. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgments to the Son. Next verse. That all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. 
Whoever does not honor the Father, or whoever does not honor the Son, does not honor the Father who sent him. What is that talking about? Well, there's a paragraph there. If you look in your Bible, it connects this portion of Scripture as a paragraph. He's talking about the unity. He's unpacking why, they're, why they want to kill him. Being equal with God, he's talking about, yeah, we're one. Not only am I equal, like we're separate beings, but he's, no, 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 no. There's more of a connection here. We are one. He's talking about the unity that they have. What I see the Father do, I do. You know, <laughs> I just laugh sometimes. When I look at different church services, I, um, I get online and um, I um, sort of, we're always trying to refine our presentations. We're always trying to refine how we do things, our music and all that stuff, right? And um, it's good. It's good to evaluate yourself, isn't it? You know, are we that? Are we that insecure that we can't evaluate ourselves? There's some people that can't do that, right? It's like, don't critique me. Don't tell me how, how I can improve. Don't tell me, you know, the, my weaknesses. But as we evaluate ourselves, it's okay. You know, God, God, knows, exactly, God knows exactly how we're made. So don't, don't get it twisted too much. And like, how dare you? You, told, you said, you know, you know when, I look on, when I look at myself on TV, everybody is telling me I'm fat. <laughs> It's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and just so you know, you know, I, I've been trying to lose some weight. <laughs> but that's not why I'm trying to lose some weight, okay, because the way I look on TV. And the way I sound on TV, you know, I, I, the way I sound in a recording, I'm very nasally, you know. It's like I try to, I got to talk like this so that way I don't have so, you know, be so nasally. You know, you think about all these things. So, when you do that, when you and you say, "Oh, let me let me see how some of these other guys, some of these other guys that um, and we're really hard on ourselves, you know, um, uh, doing worship throughout the years. Sometimes I, I mess up the words. Sometimes I mess up a chord. Hurrah! Sometimes <laughs> he's like the stars and the moon, the sky, and Jesus. It's like well, he's making up his own song. All right, okay." <laughs> I'm like, why? I was like, that's awesome. No, I forgot the lyrics, okay? <laughs> uh, so um, there's a guy, Tommy Walker. Um, he wrote some songs, and um, you guys, the, um, um, Betsy and Mike went over to their church a couple weeks ago. And I remember going to their church uh, about 10 years ago, me and my wife, and we, went to go, we wanted to hear some of his music because I really like his music, Tommy Walker. He's the one that's... Um, he, he does a, um, he knows my name, he knows my every thought, he sees each tear that falls, and he hears me when I fall, he hears me when I call. Anyway, so he wrote that and many others. He also wrote another song we sing here is like a, your love is life and breath and peace. Your love brings hope and grace to me. Your love, your never-ending love. It's pure and kind and powerful. It heals, brings hope and grace to me. Your love, your never-ending love. And your love, thank you for your love. Your love, thank you for your love. I could keep on going on that song. It's awesome. So I admire, you know, his songwriting. I admire how he puts music together. So we, me, my wife and I, we went over to his church over in Eagle Rock. That's where Eagle Rock. What kind of town is that? <laughs> it's like, 
We call it Eagle Rock because there's a rock and an eagle lives on it. Therefore, <laughs> okay, it's shaped like an eagle, like, ah, okay, all right. So we go to the church, we're there, and they sing a song that we sing, we sing, we used to sing a long time ago, I mean, we sing it here too, blessed be your name, blessed be your name, right? So they're doing that one, <laughs> we did, we, yeah, we ran that song into the ground, we sang it so, so much. So we get there, and he, he's singing the song, he's playing it. And um, he messed up the words. <laughs> yeah. He messed up the words. He said, I, man, I messed up the words so bad. And he, like, stopped the music. we got to start all over again. <laughs> yes. I didn't feel so bad. You know, with all, the, all, all my mess-ups, all my mistakes, I'm like, man, this is a guy I admire. This is a guy that does it. He's amazing, musician. And even he messes up. But it's okay to evaluate ourselves and to see what's, what other people are doing. So I sometimes get online and I check out some churches or whatever. My goodness, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. You know, there's like, um, you know, there are, you know, you, you got you got churches that they're, they're doing crazy stuff. It was like they're doing, you know, there's like just just to do it. You know, I was like, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's wild. I mean, it's like, I'm like, what in the world are these people doing, you know? And all in the name of God, and all in the name of Jesus, they're like, I'm, I'm going to do this. They're like slapping each other in the face. Like, I'm gonna, okay, you slap me. Now I'm going to slap you in Jesus' name. Okay, no, now I'm going to slap you. What, what the heck? It's a slap fest of worship and praise, I guess. You know, you got other people that are, you know, like moving the musicians out of the way. They, start playing. they don't even know how to play the instrument. They're getting up there and just start doing stuff. Like, what in the world is going on? The chaos, you know, like kicking the drummer out and like, I got rhythms of deliverance here. Do, 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 do. What in the world? It's the craziest stuff that pat, we pass on, try to pass off a lot of things that are God. What does Jesus say? What I see my father do, I do. We pass a lot of things off for God. We didn't even see him do. A lot of people are doing that. That's a good lesson for us to understand. When you get a feeling or get this thing in your mind that I needed, you know what? I, I, I felt that before. It's, it's easy to, get, to exaggerate something. When you're so full of God and full of joy, full of the spirit. I mean, there was one time I was so full of God on the streets of Manchester, England, I'm there, I'm preaching the word of God. And it's like, man, God is moving through my body so powerful. It's like, I can't believe it. You know what I want to do? In my mind, I'm thinking while I'm talking, I want to do a backflip in front of everybody. <laughs> That's how powerful I feel. I'm like, I can just do a backflip. Did you like that? <laughs> this, is, this is the flesh. This is the man, right? <laughs> And I, you know, I had these dress shoes on. I was just, I, you know, as I think back, I was like, thank God I didn't do it. Because I would have done it, and I would have slipped, mm, boom, slapped around on my face. And like, that would have been the end of that move of God. <laughs> but we try to pass off things that this is God. You see it on TV, or you see it on videos and stuff. You're like, this, that's God. But go back. Go back to verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, say it, the son also does. It's a good filter, brothers and sisters. It's a good filter for you and me. God is speaking. He never stops. He's always working. And he shows us what we are to do. He models for us. He shows us. So if he's not going to tell you to do anything that he hasn't showed you how to do it. It's beautiful. It's so interesting. So sometimes people, you know, we're like, oh, well, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do that. Well, has God shown you? No. Hey, okay, well, just be patient. God will show you. 
That's why we're talking about this uh, financial thing, you know. God's going to show us. God's going to show us how to be better stewards. God's going to show us how to be better managers. God's going to be, he's going to show us. And then we're going to, what we see the father doing, what we see with our eyes, he's going to show us. And then we'll be able to follow it. Extremely important in this day and age when you have a lot of nonsense in this world, right? A lot of voices, you know, a lot of animals talking. Animals, yeah. A lot of elephants and a lot of donkeys. <laughs> we got to follow the lamb. The lamb of God is speaking. And whatever we see the father do, that's what we're going to do. And he's going to speak. So let's allow him to speak. And the groups that, we're, that we think we're a part of, you're not part of those groups. You're not part of the traditional group. You're not part of some revolutionary group. You're part of Christ's group and whatever we see the Father doing. Jesus is doing and modeling for us what we're going to do. So isn't it hard, though? <laughs> That's why we read God's word. He shows us in his word what to do, how to do it. So with that, let's close our, our eyes and physical eyes, and let's allow our, our spiritual eyes to be open so God can show us and we can see what he's doing, and then we will, for the next week, this next week, God is going to speak to you. He's going to show you what he wants you to do. He's going to show you how to do it, how he wants you to do it. He might not even show you exactly how, but he just wants you to step like this man. He said, just get up and pick up your bedroll. And then the, the miracle, the unveiling will happen. Needless to say, God is in, the, is in, the, is in the, the job and at work at modeling for you and I, just like he did for Jesus. And he's going to do the same thing. He's going to show us. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Show us how you are at work at this very day. Show us, Lord, the kind of work that you're doing right now. Show us, Lord, how you're not stopping. You're continuing to go in this direction, so we want to follow. Help us, Lord, to understand your word and understand your communication to us so we can continue to follow you in that way. And then we can emulate what the Father is doing and what the Son is doing also. Lord, so in essence, when people look at us, they see us in unity with you. They see consistency. They don't see us all up and down, all over the place, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but they see us consistent. <clears throat> they see us not being legalistic. They see us as being um, having a fresh communication from you day to day, moment by moment. And Lord, that we can have life that the, that the Son has to give life to whom you please. So give us that life, Lord. Give us that unity, O oh Lord. Help us to honor you in how we talk. Help us to honor you in how we behave. Help us to honor you in how we respond to others. Help us to honor you, Lord. For you are worthy of all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. We give you thanks for today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, my wife and I will be up here in the front. and We want to pray with you. We also have um, um, uh, we're going to transition here and we're going to pick up this morning's offering. And like I said earlier, thank you so much for how you have been faithful, how you have allowed yourself to be an extension of God's generosity. When you give to us, to this church here, you are, you are also in connecting with what we do around the city, the homeless, uh, the palms, um, other people. You know, there, there are other people we have, you know, we want to be benevolent. Well, that, we want to be a blessing. So when people struggle with certain things, we want to be a blessing. We want to be able to extend um, provision to others. 
And so we can't do that without us coming together. So praise the Lord. Isn't God good? God has been faithful to us. Um, who is going to pray for this morning's offering? Thomas, you're going to come up. He's going to pray for this morning's offering. Amen, amen. Join me in prayer now. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again giving you thanks for the guidance and direction that you're setting us forth. We ask you that you just uh, praise these tithes and offerings today as we bring to your storefront, that we ask you to just multiply it, that we can continue to just use those sources, those resources that we need so that we can go and go out to the land and just touch those that are in need as you direct us, Lord. We ask this in your precious name, and we thank you for everything that you continuously do for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on up here, Ross. you for your love. Let's all stand together. Southern Gospel Group now. <laughs> now today, this week, what are we going to do? What are we going to what are we going to do? We're going to do what God has shown us to do. You know what that means? You got to talk with them. You know what that you know what that looks like? Prayer. You know what that looks like? Have his word open. He's going to speak. And you're going to get a right now word from God. You don't, have, you, don't, you don't need me for that. You don't need somebody else for that. All you need is to say, I'm going to do it. I'm willing. And he's going to show you. Are you going to do it, though? Yes. What? Yes. What? Yes. You're going to do it. And we're going to see what God does. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, have a wonderful week.